Um, in this video, we're going to talk about more on science, technology, and society. And in this particular video, we're going to um, tackle the topic on the human person flourishing in terms of science and technology. So in this topic, we may ask the question, well, what is happiness? Okay, so for you, what is happiness for you? So in psychology, happiness is a mental thing or it's an emotional state, shall we say, of well-being, which can be defined by positive or pleasant emotions ranging from contentment to intense joy. So that is um, in, in the field of psychology, that is how they define um, happiness is. To behaviors there specifically, happiness is a cocktail of emotions, okay, shall we say. We experience that when we do something good or positive, okay, but to a more scientific, you know, um, perspective of it, to neurologists, shall we say, happiness is the experience of a flood of hormones released in the brain as a reward for behavior that prolongs survival. Okay, so that's um, what happiness is in different um, branches of sciences or of study. So the quest, next question is that I want to ask you is that is happiness a destination or is it a journey? What say you? <laughs> right? So there are two main views when we look at happiness. The first uh, view here is what we call the hedonistic view. Um, the, this hedonistic view of well-being is that happiness is the opposite, the complete opposite of suffering. Okay, so the presence of happiness indicates that there is an absence of pain. Okay, so that's how they define uh, for hedonists what happiness is. Because of this, hedonists believe that the purpose of life is to maximize happiness and minimize the bad things, or shall we call that misery. Okay, in contrary with the hedonistic view, okay, we have also one kind of happiness which we will call eudaimonia. This is a term that combines the Greek words good and spirit. We get good and spirit to describe this ideology of what eudaimonia is. So eudaimonia defines happiness as the pursuit of becoming a better person. Okay, the pursuit of becoming a better person. So eudaimonists, shall we call them, do this by challenging themselves intellectually or engaging in activities that make them spiritually richer, richer people. So let's talk about more on eudaimonia. Again, it's from Greek words, good and spirit. So um, from its word itself, so we can say that eudaimonia, shall we say it's good spirited, okay, from, from the word itself. So it was originally coined by Aristotle, okay? And this describes the pinnacle of happiness that is attainable for us humans. It is also one um, very important concept of human flourishing, that is eudaimonia. So to compare and, uh, you know, see the, the perspective of hedonists, the hedonia and the eudaimonia, I will present this graph here, okay, picture not mine. So as you can see here in this, in this um, y-axis, in this y variable, um, feel good. This is hedonists, what they want. So when you feel good, it's either you will enjoy the sweet life or the fulfilled life. Either way. Um, if it's not, so you're going to be at the void and the dry life. For the eudaimonia, if you felt the purpose, you will have the fulfilled life and you'll have the dry life. Or the dry life, rather. So combining them, the hedonia, hedo, hedonia and the eudaimonia, you will have the fulfilled life in this quadrant here, shall we say. Okay, so that's the fulfilled life. So according to Aristotle, the one that coined the word, there is an end of all the actions that we perform which we desire for itself. We call that eudaimonia again. It's also called flourishing or happiness, simple as it is, which is desired for its own sake with all the other things being desired. Okay, Eudaimonia is a property of one's life when considered as a whole. Flourishing is the highest good of human endeavors and then towards with with all actions aim. It is success as a human being and the best life is one with excellence in the human activity. That's what the 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 one that that uh, you will experience if you reach this state of the eudaimonia. Okay, and then this is also called flourishing. Okay, so specifically since we are human beings we will call this human flourishing. 
okay so this eudaimonia concept this human flourishing came from the Nicoma nicomachean ethics so this is these are philosophical inquiry into the nature of good life for a human being this is written actually by aristotle's son nicomachus that's why from the name nicomachean ethics so human flourishing arises as a result of different components such as number one we have four phronesis the, this is uh, the habit of making the right decisions and taking the right actions in context and the pursuit of excellence for the common good. Okay, so we call that phronesis. This is one of the areas, okay, or the results um, of the human, of human flourishing. We also have friendship as one, wealth as one, and then power also one. So we have four, okay. Furthermore, um, to further our our topic in human flourishing in the ancient greek society they believe that acquiring this will surely bring the seekers happiness complete happiness which in effect allows them to partake in greater notion of what we call the good okay the good as time changes elements that comprise human flourishing have changed we know that people found means to live more comfortably explore more places develop more products and make more money which is of course one very important part now of our daily lives humans of the day are expected to become the man of the world uh, because we know that we are little by little be being you know becoming globalized supposed to situate himself in a global neighborhood the one that i said working side by side among institutions and the government to be able to reach a common goal now these times these times competition as a means of survival has become a passe which means it's outdated anymore okay and coordination is a new trend meaning helping with each other you know um, um, cooperation okay and talking communication with with others so that's a new trend instead of competition this time these days okay and after this slide we're going to have this a little bit of comparison of the eastern and western conception regarding society and the human flourishing so we're going to compare the eastern that is Asia or shall we say um, specifically is China and the, the other parts here um, of Asia and then the Western part is you know Europe so for the Eastern conception what is their perspective in society and the human flourishing their main focus actually is community centric so their their main goal is to have this community as a whole individuals should sacrifice for himself for the sake of society that's how Easterns okay Eastern people look at society in human flourishing that times um, just say for examples are the Chinese Confucian system the Japanese Bushido and these encourage studies of literature sciences and art for greater core greater cause so just take note Eastern conception is ma mainly for community centric compared to the Western conception which is more focused on individual as we can see uh, more of our discussion in in human flourishing especially in eudaimonia came from the western civilization from aristotle so yeah to be to be very clear we talked about human flourishing as an end for the western culture we have this aristotelian view okay because aristotelia Ar aristotle rather is the one that gave us the eudaimonia in the nicomanian ethics from his son nicomachus so aims for eudaimonia as the ultimate goal for the western conception so we can see here some um, comparison compared to Eastern and the Western conception. So we have again, Eastern is focus, focusing on the community. Western is based on individual. Okay. So what are the main take takeouts in this lesson in science, technology, and the human flourishing? So let's have the last parts of the slide. Every discovery, innovation, and success contributes to our pool of human knowledge. Okay. Um, right now technically 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 we call this now research you know uh, in order for us to add something to that body of knowledge humans per perpetual need to locate himself in the world by finding proofs to trace evolution elicits our idea sorry what's that okay elicits our idea of self self-importance and we have technology is a human activity now we excel in as a result of achieving science so this is um said by heidegger okay this is a, he is a german 
um, philosopher, um, Martin Heidegger, and we're going to talk more of him in the next video, actually. So here, good is inherently related to the truth. Okay, again, good is inherently related to the truth. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video in the human person flourishing in terms of science and technology. So this is still part of our science and technology Science, Technology, and Society playlist. Um, this is the source of the slides I took. Okay, not really copied it off, but, you know, edited some of it. Okay, and make it um, suited for the video format. So thank you for so much for watching. I hope you like and subscribe this video. And yeah, um, there will there is going to be a next video after this that will talk about technology as a way of revealing. Okay, so see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye.